One of the first things you'll need to do is pick up some plastic buckets. You can get those from local bakeries and they'll usually give them to you for free with the lids. And of course, if you can get your hands on some of these nice aluminum spun buckets, they look beautiful hanging from the trees and that's what we like to use. Here are some of the tools of the trade. Now, if you're a hobby uh, wannabe sugar maker, maybe you haven't started yet, you don't need everything here, but here's what I'm working with. I've got two drill bits, one for the buckets. I've got a lot of new buckets that I'm working with this year. And also I have a specialized drill bit that's made for tapping. You don't have to have it, but once you start doing a bunch of taps, it's nice. It's got a very stiff, uh, steep point, gets a nice, sharp, clean, um, drill hole. I've got some plastic taps if I need them or spiles and I've got a bunch of stainless steel right here. Got these from Smoky Lake Maple. These go into the tree this way and then I'll be putting the tubing on like so and the sap will be coming through here. These are some older leader spiles. These are gonna be used when I use our aluminum buckets, the pails we hang right on the trees, the old timey looking ones. I wanna get more of those and do the whole sugar bush uh, with the old buckets. I think they're easier and they just look cool. And this has a nice little hook here that holds the, um, the pail on. So I'll show you how to work with that. I had to buy a set of these cutters because without them you go nuts trying to get a clean, clean edge. They work really well. They don't cost much. You can use them for a lot of different things, but they make a beautiful cut, as you can see here. Of course, I've got a screwdriver, excuse me, a, um, a drill. I got this at Harbor Freight, not sponsoring me. It's a good drill. I've got a couple of battery packs. That's what I'm going to be using for making our tap holes today. This is a homemade tap puller when the tap is in the tree. Like so, I'll use this to pull it out so I'm not rocking the tap, hurting the tree. It's homemade, no big deal. If you're going to do anything uh, with maple syrup and you're using the plastic buckets, I'll talk to you about those. You absolutely have to get a couple of these. They're like 99 cents each. I keep one in my back pocket. You'll kill your fingertips on a very cold uh, morning or afternoon when you're opening up these lids, trying to bring in your sap. These are worth their weight in gold. Buy a couple of them and get a nice green color so you don't lose it. The last thing I'm going out with is a tape measure. I've got a couple of trees that might be ready to tap. I'll talk more about the size and diameter, but I've got that always in my little uh, bag of tricks. And that's about it. I've got some tubing cut ready to go. These pails are gonna go right on the tree so I don't need any tubing. They'll have their own lids and we'll get to it. We know the tree should be about 10 inches in diameter. That's about 31 inches in circumference. This tree is about 35 inches, but here's a nice trick when you're out in the sugar bush so you don't have to carry around your tape measure too much. Take your hands, put your middle fingers together, wrap it around the breast height of the tree, diameter at breast height, then keep your thumbs on the tree and where your thumbs were, put your middle finger, and then that's gonna give you an idea of how big that tree is, just by using your hands as a measuring guide. So when you're out in the sugar bush, if you put your arms around a tree or your hands around a tree like this, and they either come together or they don't come together, you know that tree is big enough to tap, and you can put in at least one bucket without worrying that it's too small. Uh, you should drill in about um, two inches, two to two and a half inches. This drill bit is about two inches and I even marked off where two inches is so when I'm drilling, I know exactly within reason how deep we need to go. When you're tapping your trees, you just wanna make sure you don't put a lot of the tap holes close to previous year's tap holes uh, because you get a dead spot. You wanna be about six inches left, right, north or south of that uh, previous tap hole. So we're gonna set our first tap uh, right over here. There's no other taps that are very close by. You want to go in a little bit of an upward angle and then just go straight in. And there you go. That's really the, all there is to it. 
if you're in the middle of a run, you'll see the sap start flowing. Today, we don't have anything going on. Once the trees warm up, that sap will start dripping out. We got our hole drilled, put up our first bucket. Got our little hammer, and I know you're gonna laugh at the pink handle, but there's something to it. When you drop this in the leaves, it's very easy to find. One of the things I like to do before I put my spile in, make sure you got some of that old sawdust out of there, the drill dust. If you've got a flow, that'll come out. It'll just drain itself. But I like to clean it out as best we can. Putting your taps in, you don't want to slam it. You're not driving a railroad spike. So we're going to put it in. We're going to hit it. And I want you to listen to this. When you hear that sound kind of rise up, it sounds a little bit dense, the sound changes. That means you're in deep enough. Give it a couple of taps for good measure. If you tap too hard, you're gonna split the tree. And if you come back next year, you're gonna see it split open. You're gonna have some bark missing. So you wanna take care of your trees so they keep giving you plenty of sap for years. These are easy buckets. We're gonna slide it on now. That's all there is to it. The last thing we're gonna do is put our lid on top of the bucket. This just keeps the rainwater out. It doesn't do anything more than that. It keeps a little bit of the debris out. And that's it. Your bucket's ready to harvest the sap. One of the tricks you can do also, if it gets really windy before you've got any sap filling up your bucket, these may blow around a bit. What I like to do is find a nice, clean, round rock, keep it handy near the tree. This way, if the wind is coming in, or if you know it's gonna get windy, you can drop the rock inside your bucket and that'll keep it stationary. You won't have to come out and go down the ravine looking for your buckets. Getting your bucket set up for tubing is very easy. Leave the lid on so you know where the lid overlaps on the top of it, and then just put your holes wherever you want them. If it's a big bucket, you can put two holes for two tubes for a double tap tree, or you can do singles. Really easy, just give them a quick wipe out after you're done and you're good to go. We're running buckets now, the plastic buckets, and these spiles have a little barb at the end and they hold on to the tubing. These are stainless steel. Nice thing about these, they're a little bit expensive on the front end, but on the back end, you clean them up, you give them a good boil, and you can use them for years and years and years, as long as you don't lose them. This is what it looks like. This is the part that goes in the tree. And you can see it's got that little barb right here. And that's what holds the tubing on. Once you get it over that barb, you're all set. If you're doing some uh, sugaring yourself and you're using these buckets, always put something in between your buckets. It kind of breaks the seal so you don't have that vacuum. It's very frustrating if you um, have got a fight with every bucket, especially if they've been stacked up on top of each other. You still get a little of that anyway, but uh, it's much easier to deal with. Well, if you think you need specialized equipment to do a little maple syruping or sugaring back home, I've got my Cyan XD here, certainly not a pickup truck. I'm gonna put all of this, uh, all of the buckets and accoutrement in the back. I've got my drill. Got some extra tubing. I've got a uh, little brush cutter there so I can clear out some of the trails. We're gonna get that back sugar bush tapped and uh, we'll be ready for that next flow that comes in. Here we are in the back end of the property. This is the back sugar bush. You see the house is up there. That's the hill we'll be working on. Not too bad. Keeps me fit. Morning, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube. It's Rob in Connecticut. It is February 5th. We had a couple of nights of bitter, bitter cold temperatures. Daytime temperatures were way down below 20, and uh, the evening temperatures were into the negative numbers, and the wind chill was crazy. So, 
I took a break for two days. Didn't do any, I didn't do the finish tapping today. We're gonna go out and do the last 20 or so that we have. I think it's 26 that remain. They're in the top part of our sugar bush. And once we get all these tapped, we should be good to go. Temperatures should be coming up to around 45 today. I don't know if it's gonna uh, make the, uh, the trees start to flow because some of these trees, I think it probably rock solid right now uh, with the way we've had all these um, really crazy temperatures. But we'll see, you'll see. And uh, who knows, maybe we'll get some flow today and we'll start hauling some sap. Heading down to the top of the sugar bush here, putting in our final buckets to turn it into a beautiful day. The sun's shining. We'll finish off tapping today, getting these last buckets up, and then we'll be ready to harvest some delicious sweet sap and start boiling some maple seed. Oh no.